Okay, welcome to section on writing the report. Now at this point you have collected all the data that you needed, you've analyzed it, now you're ready to start putting the written product together. So here we're going to talk about some of the constituent components of that so you know what to expect along the way as well as the presentation that is going to come towards the end. Now bear in mind that as you write this you can refer back to your syllabus as well as the instructions for this module there is a rubric that I use in order to evaluate both the rough draft and the final draft of your case study. So be sure to adhere to that so you'll know uh, just what I'm looking for and, and how I'm weighing all the criteria. So with that said, let's go ahead and get started. Hey, the format of this case study will look somewhat like a master's thesis, somewhat. Uh, it will have an abstract at the beginning for anywhere from 100 to 150 words. If you need a little bit more than that, then, then that's okay. That's just a general guideline. In an abstract, what you do is you introduce and cover the entirety of your study, meaning what was the, you know, what was it you were going to investigate, what methods did you use, and what conclusions did you come to. And that is so that if, if there's someone that wants to possibly utilize this study as reference material, they would be able to screen it to see if it's relevant to their needs without having to read the whole thing. So, and I will suggest that the abstract is the very last thing you write. Get everything down, that way the abstract flows a lot more smoothly and it's usually it's one of the more difficult uh, pieces of the paper to write. The introduction, uh, explanation of the problem and the situation being studied. You'll want to go and address all the criteria listed here. What you want to do is give the reader a very clear picture of what you were looking at and what it was you wanted to uh, be able to answer. Okay? What was the problem? Uh, was it something that was re uh, a real deal, like you know, a classroom management issue? Was it something related to policy? Be very specific about that. What were the questions that guided you through doing this? What was the research setting? Where did this occur? Where did the interviews occur? The operational definitions. This will come if you have any kind of particular terminology that is unique to your field. If not everyone uses acronyms like AYP, then you'll want to make clear what those are. If you're looking at the context of uh, counseling or perhaps administration, you'll just want to clarify that. Any assumptions or limitations? We all go into every situation with certain assumptions. So whatever yours may be, you know, uh, if, if you have a study that is over uh, academic yearly progress, an assumption may be that with, you know, adequate instruction, all students can learn. Or my assumption may be that uh, uh, students that are ESL students would have uh, more difficulty learning content. You know, just be very upfront and specific about what your assumptions are. Also note the limitations. This is a characteristic of qualitative research and it's a very relevant one. That way, and I'm sorry, in doing this, what you'll do is spell out, this is what uh, I did, okay? The limitations are that I was only able to interview X number of people. The limitations are that I conducted this study in the course of one semester, or that it was confined to one grade level or one classroom. You know, uh, but you'll, you'll be aware of these things. As you go through your study and you collect and analyze your data, you always come into these little insights that say, oh, if I could have done that, that would have, that would have made the study you know, work a little bit better. Okay, the review of the literature. Now, the review of the literature is something that uh, is important to do. What you're doing is you're stating this is what, my, uh, this is what the body of knowledge says about my topic other studies that have done, been done in this field have been quantitative you know or uh, the studies that are like mine have been more oriented to higher grade levels as opposed to the one I'm looking at okay? what were the conclusions of these studies okay, what were the similarities or dissimilarities that you have found as you have gone and, and um, uh, accessed them remember as you go through and do a review of the literature, you're, you're not just looking for who agrees with you, you're also looking for who does not agree with you, and you're trying to find out 
you know, better ways of conducting your study. So this is where you'll say what those ways were. Explanation of the methodology, okay? Uh, information on the population or the groups being studied. What was the grade level? Uh, how many boys were there? How many girls were there? Uh, what time of day was it uh, conducted in? If you interviewed someone, who did you interview? What was, um, you know, what was their level of experience, etc.? The instruments that were used, did you just do an observation? Did you do an observation in an interview? Did you also have a survey? If you conducted the survey, what, was this, what did the survey instrument look like? Was it online? You know, you'll go and collect this, this information and also present it in your case study. What were the procedures? Now, this is uh, fairly uh, uncomplicated right here because you're just going to say this is the sequence of what I did. Initially, I you know, contacted the teacher or contacted the student or, or got required permission from the parents. I then observed. I then uh, conducted an interview, analyzed the data, just steps one, two, three, four, five, whatever they may be. Okay. Data analysis. How did you go and uh, analyze this? In this instance, you're talking about doing membership categorization and qualitative data analysis, which is what we talked about in the last lecture. Okay. Trustworthiness. How, did you, how have you gone to make sure that the conclusions you have come to have been trustworthy? Have you checked back with the people that participated in your study? so that you could share with them the data. Did you conduct another, uh, I'm sorry, did you retrieve another source of data, meaning maybe standardized test scores or maybe, you know, uh, some other source of information from the school? How is it that what you have done is, should, why should it be trusted? That's where you have to kind of cinch that up. The audit trail. Okay? Uh, now this is as it is relevant to you, but in, in a nutshell, what this means is, you know, as you have gone and collected this data, you know, how, how have you made sure that what you did was what you were supposed to do? If you were supposed to go and get permission, how did you do that? How did you take care of little procedural requirements along the way? And usually for uh, a section like this, the explanation of the methodology, it's really very straightforward. There's not a lot to it. You're just saying, what it was that you did. Not a lot of narrative involved in this. Okay, the descriptive portion. This is where you will say, basically, this is what I found. Okay, um, what did you observe in the setting that you conducted your observations in? How are, well, when you went and conducted the interviews with your uh, respondents, okay, what kinds of things did they have to say? You know, and, and it's like chapter four in a, dissert, in a dissertation, in a thesis, dissertation comes later. Um, what, you, what you're doing is saying, this is what I found. You're not necessarily saying, this, these are my conclusions. It's more, this is what I found. This is how it relates to uh, the context of class being studied. Now, the outcomes of your case study. This is where you articulate the relevance of it. What are the implications? What are the conclusions? After you have gone and collected all the data, analyzed it, related the findings, what can you go and say? Now, what can you say definitively about this? Now, I'm going to back up here just a moment. When it comes to the descriptive portion here, another thing you may want to think about, this is a good place to, to pull in quotations from people. Remember, what you're doing is using uh, an analysis of the data that you have collected in order to generate a larger narrative so that a reader can understand the need for something, what you did to meet that need, and how that has changed the situation. So, you know, uh, you'll have the narrative that you write in your own words, but you'll also have uh, statements and phrases by other people. You're using them as a way to glue together the larger narrative of the study. Okay, uh, number six, the references. Make sure you uh, reference all the sources of information you have, and they should be in APA. Now, the appendices. I'll be expecting this as part of the case study, 
make sure that you include the original field notes, meaning the observation that you conducted of your setting, the interview transcripts in their entirety. I don't want the data cards, I just want the interview transcripts. Any photographs, audio tapes, videotapes, you know, these days we're talking about a USB or maybe an SD card, just about that long. Um, include those. This is like a cumulative file for everything that you have used. If you used a survey, include a copy of the questions on that survey, as well as the, uh, you know, the, the master results for, you know, what was, uh, how people responded to those questions. How many, how many people responded? What did they have to say? Were there any other comments, things like that. Okay. Now, writing the report. You want to go and write this so that they, you index the uh, data materials so they can easily be found. By that, this is where the data cards come in. Because if you have, and if you'll remember, as you go through the, these, uh, the data that you've got, you'll develop different kinds of categories and you can just sort of arrange them let me go across here. Uh, you may have six, you may have nine, you may have four. It just depends on what's relevant. That is where these themes really come in handy because the emergent themes are going to be the larger issues that you will probably be relating in your case study. Okay? So you can extract surveys, interviews, observations, the kind of data that you collected because all of what you have can be found on those data cards, those index cards. Okay. As you go and write this, make cross-categorical comparisons. What kinds of similarities did you see from one category to another? What kinds of similarities did you see um, in how people responded? Did the boys tend to say the same general thing? The girls tend to say the same general thing? Was there a difference based on, you know, uh, language composition of your class or uh, ethnic composition? This is where you're going to want to, you know, include and put that data out there. Okay, are there overlaps between the categories? Did you originally start out with ten categories and then realize, well, I really only need seven? Um, you know, that this will be where you go and talk about that. Okay. All right. Develop a provisional outline for your case study as you are going to write it. What I would do is don't do this a paragraph at a time. Take time to make an outline. If it has to be multiple pages long, then let it be multiple pages long. You want uh, to have something, a framework that you can go to that will let you state what needs to be stated. You don't want to get off topic. This case study is supposed to represent sort of a little bubble of reality to where as a person reads about it they will understand what Mrs. Rasmussen's fourth grade science class uh, was dealing with as it related to academic yearly progress. Okay? Be very clear about, about that. Okay? <clears throat> and we've said this before but it bears repeating cross-reference the index materials. Okay? know which of these note cards or these data cards you're going to be using with the specific parts of your paper. So as you have your outline, you know, item one, item two, three, four, if cards six through eight are relevant for item one, and then cards 11 through 15 are relevant for item two, list that out. It will help you stay focused. You want to be focused in this. Okay. Follow the outline carefully. Cannot stress that enough. You'll devote a pretty good amount of time to making this outline. Treat it like it is sacred scripture. Just trust me, your paper will flow easier when you do that. Okay. All right, uh, make sure that you have subheadings in the uh, throughout the paper. This is for your benefit. It's also for the reader's benefit. You know, you, you want to have people be able to sort of form a mental map for what you're talking about as you go through this case study. Okay. So, you know, when you go back uh, earlier in this presentation where you had abstract introduction, review of the literature, uh, methodology, you will want to go and label those sections. And if you have subsections in there within those sections, label those as well. Okay. Okay. 
Um, here's another strategy. Uh, you can take a look at this and see if it works for you. Uh, I have done it in the past, and it, it is something that certainly helps because we can get so close to our data that we kind of we don't know how to step back. We don't know how to take a fresh look. So if you take notes upon the notes, you can see if there are inconsistencies. You can see if maybe there was not enough attention paid to a certain area. Maybe questions were worded poorly, etc. You'd be able to go and um, you know uh, look at that better if you were to try this. But again, you know that's something for you to see if that works for you. Okay. Good quote, sometimes referred to as portraits because case studies like portraits must capture the essence and myriad dimensions of the subject or setting. Okay, now, when you go and uh, develop a case study, it is literally a portrait. It is partly scientific educational research. There's also partly the power of the narrative that is in there. So remember, you are the tour guide. You're wanting to walk us who have never been where you have been through this situation. Remember, you're the authority here. You've done the legwork. You've done the interviews. You know the setting. You know the parameters, the framework. You know all of that. But walk us through it in a way that the narrative is rich so we can really understand and not be bound by our own assumptions. Because if we were bound by our own assumptions, well, we would make a mistake. We, we wouldn't fully understand what it was that you went and studied. Okay, um, what I would do if I were you is, you know, you're going to submit a rough draft of this and just look on the syllabus schedule and it will tell you when the rough draft is due. I grade this rough draft and so you will get it back, you will get it back with feedback. Uh, what I would do also is give this to a peer Ask them to read it, and, and a fresh set of eyes a lot of times can help because if they're not invested into your study, they'll be, they may be able to see if there are any gaps. Okay? Take, their, take their feedback. You know, Take the feedback that I send back to you, but also take peer feedback. If you're inclined to, to share it with um, maybe a, a spouse or a friend or a colleague at school, I would encourage that. If you're not sure how something sounds, Take time and read it out loud, word for word. It can help you to know how something sounds if you're hearing it like that. I've done that many times, and it really is uh, its a benefit. It is a benefit. And last but not least, grab a computer and write on. So uh, we'll have more to say about the presentation, but this is it as far as the writing the report goes. So... Here's the presentation. <laughs> okay, what you're going to be doing with the presentation is utilizing either a PowerPoint or a Prezi. Uh, it has not been decided at this point what we will do. Uh, I will make that determination and I'll communicate that to you. The presentation should include major components of the paper, meaning the introduction, the review of the literature, you know, quotes that say what certain researchers had to say on it, an explanation of the methodology, etc. You will have 20 minutes to present, no more. We're going to treat this like it's an educational conference. You have 20 minutes to go and make your case, and that is where it is going to stay. If it goes past that, I will kindly and gently cut you off, but that is the criteria that you should expect to operate by. And then prepare handouts from the slides. What I would do is, um, you know, just do a, a slide printout if you do a PowerPoint. If you do a Prezi, uh, you know, if you want to give people the, the access to that Prezi so that they can see it, that's great. If you can go and present uh, something like a, um, you know, a PowerPoint slide or an Adobe uh, printout from it, that's fine too. But the goal here is to go and share and disseminate our research findings. Okay, well, that's all we have for writing the report and then presenting the results of the study. If you have any questions, be sure to contact me. Uh, and uh, again, don't forget the rest of the directions on the Watch Me First video. So we'll talk to you later.